Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1075. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to see how to allocate hours across work days. So we have a start and an end date and a number of hours. So we need to allocate this. Now, this formula comes from Stefan Crump at the Mr. Excel message board. It is a beautiful formula. I'm actually going to do it in a couple steps because there's some great concepts as we build this formula. Now let's just go and see for this first row, we need part of the 80 in this cell and part of the 80 in this cell, and the rest should be 0. Ultimately, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about work days. There's total 15 work days between this start and end. 12 of them are going to be in April. Three of them are going to be in May. So this is what our formula will look like. 12 divided by 50, that will give us the proportion for this month of the total 80. And this one will be 3 divided by 15. That is three working days in May out of total 15 times our 80. All right, but it's not going to quite be that easy. The, the hard part here is, look, we're going to need to, when we get to this cell, or create a formula here that we copy over and down. So when we get to this cell, it knows to take 415 and the end of this month. So it'll take the end of the month minus 415 and calculate the number of work days. Here, it's going to need to know that that's the end date and then that 51 is the begin date. All right, let's first start by talking about the start date. We're actually going to use the max function, and we're going to look at two dates. We're going to compare the start, and this one, since we're copying over and then down, needs to be locked. I'm hitting F4 three times to lock the column, but not the row. And I need to compare that to the current uh, begin of the month, and I'm going to hit F4, lock this one going down, but not across the columns. Now let's just check this out and enter this and see what this gives us across, see what this looks like across all the rows. All right, so now look at this 415, 415, 415, 415. It's not until this month here that is the correct start date. But look, when it gets to 5 1, it knows to take 5 1. The rest of these will be zeroed out. Only these two dates will come into play when we get our formula working. Now let's do the end date. And we're not going to use the max. We're going to use the min and say, hey, I would like to compare this and lock 1, 2, 3, three times with the F4 key. And I'm going to compare it, ah, not to this date, because this is the end. So I'm going to do the end of the month function of this start date. And this needs to be locked going down, but not across the columns. Comma 0 says, give me the end of this month. So for each one of these first days in the month, now end of the month will give us the end of the month. So min will compare those, Control Enter, and check this out. Each one of these is incorrect, but when we get to 4, 1, there's the proper end. Now how did it do that? It said, give me the smallest of the end of this month or this particular date here. So that's the smallest. When it got over here, it said, what's the smallest of five, the end of May compared to this end date? And boom, it got the correct date. Now check this out. Bigger date minus earlier date, bigger date minus earlier date with our net work days. And we will get our proper count using those calculated start and end date. So watch this. I'm going to copy this in Edit Mode, Control C, C to open up the clipboard. I'm going to clear it, Control C. There I have that first little bit, Escape. And then I'm going to come here, Control C. Those will be the start and end dates inside of net work days. Now we have standard Saturday and Sunday, so we're going to use the old one. If you had an unusual configuration of weekends, then you could use that one. So networking days, hey, the start, that's the max. I got the start date, comma, and then the end date. Clo and we don't have any holidays, or we could put holidays if we wanted to. And check that out. Now we're going to get a series of either negative or positive numbers. Now, why are these negative? Because when you take a smaller date and subtract a bigger date, you're getting minus. So it's only when we have these positive numbers do we get the count of the work days for this month. That is beautiful. Now, we could build an if. 
and check whether that whole thing is less than zero. But when you get into that situation, you can use the max. We just say the max of zero or any one of the, of the result of this calculation. And it will always give us 0, 0, 0. But because this is not negative, it will give us these numbers. So all the negative numbers, instead of running an if, we can simply say equals max max of 0, comma, or that. Ready? Control Enter. And now we have a bunch of zeros. And we have our 12 and our 3. All right, so now we can simply compare with division these counts of the work days for this particular month times the actual number of work days. And that'll be net work days. And I'm simply taking the start, 1, 2, 3 times with the F4, the end, 1, 2, 3 times. There's no holidays. I close this off. This is going to give me, for this one first record, 15 for all of those. So now what do we do? We simply take 15, or whatever the result from this one is, copy, come down here, Control V, and division. We're comparing the actual network days to the total work days, and boom. That's number formatting. I'm going to use the keyboard Control Shift Grave Accent to apply general number formatting. I'm going to copy this over. And there we have our proportion of the hours that should be allocated, 80 and 0 0.02. Now we can simply multiply that. I'm going to copy this. I'm not going to do this last one down here. I'll do it right up here. Equals total hours, 1, 2, 3 times with the F4 key. Lock the column and not the row times. Control V. And you've got to be kidding me. Control Enter. Control Shift Grave Accent to get rid of that. Number formatting, copy it over and copy it down. That is absolutely amazing. I'll close the clipboard, scroll over, Control Home. Look at that. So we properly allocated and however you want to round that. That is just an amazing formula. If you haven't been to the MrExcel.com form, that place is unbelievable. Thousands of people at this site that are way smarter than me about formulas. Some of the absolute efficient formula solutions for typical problems is just amazing. Now, you, you know, you could solve this using lots of ifs, and it would be crazy. But man, is that beautiful. All right, we'll see you next trick.